Hey everybody, it's Ade Shukoya at Bosnia Agile Day 2018 and with Yasmina Nikolic? Nikolic. <laughs> yes, definitely so. Um, so, please, yeah, great. Yasmina gave an awesome and keynote, uh, or gave a talk earlier on about Agile culture, but before we get into that, I'm going to ask Yasmina to introduce herself. So, well, I'll do that exactly as I did uh, um, at, at the talk, uh, that I like to define myself uh, somewhere in the liminal space in between the the natural sciences and the natural and the, the social sciences. Okay. So I actually uh, I teach at the university. Okay. Um, I teach at the University of Belgrade. I teach at the University of Barcelona. I teach agile culture. Uh, there's masters, but I also teach machine translation, for example. Right. Okay. So there is a lot of you know like a polymer. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, I do uh, coach many organizations, so that's what I do uh, most of the time. Uh, I coached over probably thirty something. Uh, in the last nine years, mm. so I consider myself, and I like to call myself agile organizational developer. Right, okay. And I might change that. Okay. To something else anytime cool. soon. So let's just pick up, um, unpack a few things that you just mentioned there. So you, you spoke about agile culture. Uh, for those who are watching right now, like, well, what does that mean? Well, actually, it's very, it's very simple because uh, the culture itself has its own definition, mm. and it's a system of values, beliefs that are shared uh, within a one culture cycle, meaning a group of people, okay. and uh, the system that governs the behaviors. Okay. So if you see it like that, and you know that the agility itself is defined as four values, 12 principles, uh, like a system of values then, okay. then it's really uh, easy to conclude that uh, the agile culture would be uh, agile values shared by a group of people working together mm. and when I say shared I mean everybody understands what the values are mm. and there's a common understanding of what the, the proper behavior would be mm. uh, in that culture cycle or group. Mm. So, so how do you deal with the challenge that actually sometimes there's a bit like what Jeff Patton I always remember the, 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 the circle and the, the triangle and that people say oh yeah we're talking about the same thing but everyone it's like whoa we surely didn't how does that how do you overcome that in regards to values? Because some people might say, oh yeah, here's, yeah, yeah we've got trust, but or we've got transparency. I understand, but it's like, yeah. uh, how do you Well, it's it? very hard, but actually I find it uh, not harder than uh, refining or clarifying or decomposing product backlog. Because uh, you, you see, uh, with the agility, we managed to go deep into acceptance criteria and to define the requirements at the level of the almost automated, automated acceptance right, okay, criteria, yeah, like yeah. given that, yeah, and, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, actually the same process you could follow for the culture, you just need to be careful uh, when you try and decompose the value, which is a word, mm -hmm. like integrity or the openness, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, by asking people what does that mean to you, mm. uh, that you slice it down, chunk it down mm. into concrete behavior in a concrete situation. Mm. But a very concrete one, like individual behavior for a very specific situation. Mm. So I like to say it's, uh, you describe it at a level of senses. So what is the level of mistakes you're going to tolerate, for example, on this mm, team? Mm. What is the, because you have to talk about the, for example, people like to think about themselves that are exceptional and the team is, you know, uh, thriving to, you know, like very, very successful. Okay. So if the success is the value, if the right, productivity yeah. is about, so then what does it mean? Okay. Can, we, can we make mistakes? Mm. And if yes, how many? Okay, what type of a mistake? Right. Right, okay. You know? And then you go back into analyzing some very concrete situations. Like that you have them a lot, you know, so you use them to talk about is this acceptable, mm -hmm. you know, and to what level. Mm -hmm. And then you you end up with a list of, of, of concrete behaviors that mm -hmm. form your culture. And really you can forget then about, you know, mm -hmm. the words, right, openness okay. and focus, because what you have is something much more palpable mm -hmm. and uh, actionable. And if you think um, about the culture in terms of uh, iterative, also an increment, you know, it's something, the culture of building the culture, the culture of changing it all the time mm. and finding what works the best for the given uh, context and the given moment, mm. then you have the, the cultural agility um, mm. also embedded in, uh, in a team. That's it's not complicated, really not. It's not, but it's like most things, right? Well, this is my view of most, of most things, especially from an agile 
perspective, some things are simple but not easy, right? Exactly. Especially when yeah, you're yeah. human beings. And when you were talking there, mm. it, it was kind of like, so it was a bit like a lot of the times we hear fail fast, fail early, yeah. right? But it sounds like in that context where we need to define what does failure look like in this context. Well, yeah, okay. what do we mean? So, you know, when we talk about failure, what's acceptable failure, exactly. what's not acceptable failure? When we talk about early, what are we talking about? So that everyone's got some clarity in terms of how, how they approach that and we've got a shared view on it. Mm. Okay, so also you, you shared that, you shared an example of somebody saying that if you've got a, if they've got a team and there's some people not following their values, how they should deal with it. And then you made a very interesting point where actually, if you've got people who are together, but do not have the shared values, then you can argue that actually they're not even a team yet. Yeah. So how do you roll that back to actually help them to become a team before they can even start? Well, actually, it's really important to understand that. I mean, you can say, you know, you can fake it. You know, you can say, ah, this is our team. But it will work as a team, meaning it will produce substantial uh, outcome right, okay. as a team only and when the team really shares values and beliefs. Yep. So only when they really understand what what's important and, and, and what's allowed, mm -hmm. you know, and what's like, we better stop doing this. What's acceptable. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you have a person that not only doesn't share the values, mm -hmm. but doesn't share this basic value, I don't think it's valuable to share the values. Right, gotcha. <laughs> Your baseline is... That, that's then, you know, that, that's, uh, you know for sure that you can't, I mean, it's not okay even for that person, you know, because th they don't want to do that. It's okay. Mm. They just don't want to belong there. Mm. So you have to respect that. Mm. And of course, it's not good for the team because mm. they will struggle all the time mm. with something they can't possibly change. Mm. How would you approach, approach that? Also taking into consideration system thinking. So as you rightfully spoke about earlier on, um, sometimes what we see as the behavior, we can put an interpretation behind it, but there could be any number of things behind it. Like it might be the environment, it might be personal life circumstances, it might be capabilities issues, it could be any number of things. Uh, what would be a good way to approach it in a way that's not detrimental to the team, but also doesn't just write off the individual and make an assumption of, uh, based on a cognitive bias? You know, caring is fine. I mean, you can care about it. Uh, caring about people is fine. And then you have these you can, uh, conversations that are also, uh, you have to respect the limits also, you know? Okay. So you have to, uh, but you have to be as an individual, not only a person that knows how to respect the limits of other people, mm. but also how to communicate your own limits. Okay. You know, that's very important. And uh, what I find normally that people are not used to uh, uh, explaining assertively. Right, you okay. know what, what's uh, what's the red line? Mm. You know, so they take too much, uh, or they they just you know uh, there's a lot of pressure, yeah. and then uh, okay. So, so many many variants of uh, of not being capable of uh, asserting yourself. Mm. So it sounds like mm. uh, communication effectiveness, emotional intelligence, social ability, and all of those various things combining. Or if when you simplify it, it's just being aware of, you know, I exist, you exist, and probably we are not capable of sharing everything. Okay. So, you know, the limits, uh, you know, we need to know our limits and right. we need to respect them. Okay, and in sharing that, uh, the last thing that came to me is, actually this is where, where it, we work, start recognizing that Agile and some of the things that we're talking about here don't just exist within the organization. So for example, I can see how that principle could help in marriages, in families, oh, come on, yeah. friendships, of course, absolutely. And internationally as well. You know what I countries. find very complicated, and that's also from my, I have a lot of experience working in education, in public sector, right, okay. also in politics. I'm an MP. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm an MP. MPs in uh, Yes, I'm an MP, and I'm an MP from uh, the opposition uh, right, okay. in my country. So, But it doesn't matter that much, it's uh, the thing that you learn. Um, you know the hierarchical systems they are they, they are not modern anymore I mean mm. uh, there are other systems growing up and uh, uh, where it's not like the holocracies or the you know it's high performance and mm. self-organization so I think actually people are becoming more mature right. so in general you right. know so and the technology is there and this deep learning and uh, I think we will see a lot of changes 
in terms of how the societies are organized. Mm. You know, because the society, it's also a culture circle. Of course, exactly. It's a culture circle. Of course. And when you change main variables there, mm. uh, such as uh, communication, like newspapers or something mm. else, digital communication, you know, because we are used to communicating through sender media, but it's changing and it's changing fast. Mm. So we are going to have different types of society. And uh, for sure, digital mm. society is not going to look like the, the, the literacy society, you know. Mm. Uh, but what was my point is that um, I'm, I'm used to working with people that uh, come from uh, command control uh, systems. And that's okay, because they, it was useful yeah, you know, yeah, in, in the previous settings. Yeah. But then I can see clearly uh, that it fails. Mm. It just fails. You know, th there's no result. Mm. So uh, my question is uh, not just for myself, but the whole Agile community, because we are really tapping into um, some sort of different societal organization there. Right, okay. You know, what are the new leaders? If it's not command and control, and mm. it's not, uh, and we do need leaders, mm. then they can't be really expect and inspect and adapt. They have to be something else. Mm. Uh, so let's see what, what the digital uh, society brings in in terms of that. So I'm very curious about it. Awesome. Well, on a, a great note to end also, I'm sure that you've created a lot of value for some of the people listening and some of them might want to be able to ex reach out to you, explore for them, <coughs> maybe get you into the organization to help them with the organization. One thing I forgot, so I started saying this because I wanted to actually ma uh, highlight one thing, that there is a lot of power abuse. Of course. There is a lot of power abuse. When you mentioned that, you know, it could be used in families with the, the, this, uh, setting up the limits and respecting them, mm -hmm. exactly. And then I think uh, that is very helpful in those uh, context, mm. you know, setting up the limits and asserting them. Mm. Um, Great stuff. So I can see that a lot of people are most probably going to want to reach out to you with questions, maybe get you into organization. Perfect. How do they I contact you? Answer them. How do you well, it's uh, my I mean, it's uh, my email and my uh, Twitter account is Jazila. Okay. Uh, with double L. Okay. Got that. And um, that's good. Cool. <laughs> And then uh, the email is uh, as my name and surname at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and yeah, there I have my LinkedIn account. I'm all over the places. So awesome. <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah. Well, really want to thank you for your time. Really appreciate thank it you. for your lovely insights. So thank you thank so you, much. Man. So there you hear it. Um, you know, culture, as you're hearing again, and I keep on hearing that, culture is fundamentally key. Um, it's something that we create as a collective, it's something that can evolve. And it's also about within there being able to make sure that we're clear on what we're talking about, and when we, especially when we start looking at the values that we're using to create that culture or team, that we're all very clear in ensuring that we're on the same page. Okay, so it's Ade Shukoya at Bosnia Agile Day 2018. It's Arievo, and we'll catch you soon.